So today I'm going to make sure you pick the right blade that suits you. So you may be asking like why is it even important to choose the blade so carefully and not make any mistakes in this process? And that's because it affects many factors like speed, spin potential, feeling and even style. There are lots of disadvantages that you can come across if you don't choose the right blade for you. So if your blade is like too fast and you won't be able to control the ball or your balls will like fly off the table. So you don't want to be making those types of mistakes. The same thing happens when your blade is too slow. You just won't be able to produce any power. And if you don't have the right feeling, if you don't have a feeling that you like, it's, it's kind of weird when you play with the blade as well. And then another mistake I ran into when I was choosing my first blade was sacrificing feeling for speed. I was just going for a really fast blade because I thought my shots would go faster. But what I didn't know is that like they wouldn't even go on the table. So, so if you're a top spin attacker like me, some advice I would give to my younger self is to not pick a blade that's uh, faster than offensive minus. Once you get into that offensive plus territory, short game becomes like actually very hard and it's hard to keep the ball on the table and be accurate. I'm not saying that as you progress further, you can switch to an offensive plus blade when you have more feeling and control over your shots. But for now, you don't really want to be sacrificing the, the accuracy and the feeling. That's basically what I'd say to my younger self because that was like a really bad mistake I made and it really slowed down my progress. When I switched to a slightly slower blade, I had a lot more control over the ball and I could feel the contact really nicely and uh, I knew exactly what I was putting on there and exactly what the opponent was putting on as well. I could really feel the ball like soak into my orbit and soak into my blade. And after I did this, I had such a big improvement in my short game. So let's talk a little bit about compositions like pure wood, carbon, hinoki and balsa. So if you're wondering, these are the materials that your blades are actually made of. And having different types of woods in your blade actually boil down to more than just price and looks. They actually have a huge impact on feeling, control, speed and spin potential. For the purpose of this video, I'm just going to stick to talking about pure wood and carbon. But if you're wondering, balsa blades are very soft blades with a lot of catapult effect and are often very very light. And hinoki blades have a lot of dwell time and they're usually quite expensive, but they have a good balance of control and spin. So back to pure wood and carbon, let's start off with pure wood. The advantages with pure wood is that it has a lot of feeling and control and it's really easy to like hold the ball on your racket and place it well. But the disadvantage is that you don't have that much speed. And this is not the case with all of the wood blades because I personally use a very fast wood blade because it gives me a good combination of feeling and uh, pace. It's not often that you'll see world class players use pure wood blades but it does happen. And what you will see the top players using is carbon. Carbon is well known for its speed and its weight. Usually carbon blades are lighter than most all wood blades. And in general, they're faster than wood blades as well. People will say like, oh my god, there's some wood blades that are faster than some carbon blades. But I'm talking about the majority here. The reason I took a step back from carbon blades was that I didn't have as much feeling. The, the feeling I got on contact was quite mute and... When I switched to all wood, I got a lot more vibrations and feedback, on, uh, feedback from the ball. So personally, I got the most improvement when I used my wood blade, but it's not to say that you can't try carbon blades, because there are some carbon blades that may suit you as a beginner. Another question you have to ask yourself during your earlier development stages is, what kind of style do you want to play? Do you want to play more of a loopy topspin attack, a flat direct topspin attack, or do you want to be a blocker? And you have to choose your blade to accommodate your playing style and suit it best. So if you're a blocker, I wouldn't necessarily recommend the same setup to you as I would to a uh, topspin attacker from mid to far distance. Obviously because your criteria is different. So if you're a topspin attacker from mid to far distance, you might want to get an offensive minus blade. Because that will give you the extra kick and power that you need to get the ball on the table from way back. And if you're a blocker, then you'd be looking for a blade that helps you absorb the quality of the opponent, neutralize it, and get the ball back on the table. So something a little slower with more feeling and control, so you can like judge the contact and place the ball where you want it to go. There are some awesome Butterfly, Steger, T-Bar blades for under $100 that really suit the beginner, beginner market really well. Blades like Corbell, Stratuswood, Steger Offensive Classic, uh, Stiga Clipper are really really good for topspin attack. In terms of pricing, I wouldn't recommend you to spend more than $100 on the blade because 
it will make a difference if you increase the price and the quality will get higher but at a beginner level it's not going to make as much of a difference as it would at a high level and there are plenty of blades under a hundred dollars that are very high quality and anyone can use them from beginners to the to the very top blades like corbel offensive classic uh, Stratus Wood are really good blades to build your skills upon and then you can upgrade later. A bonus tip I have, a personal story, is not to overthink. Please do not fall into this trap. When I was getting my first racket, I researched about it for three to four months. I should have spent that time training, I'm going to be honest. I was clueless about blades, but I just researched and researched and researched and watched reviews and watched reviews and watched reviews. And, watched reviews. and I still managed to pick a carbon blade with offensive plus ready. And then once I got the actual blade, I realized that it barely even matters. It's like 5% of your entire like skill, playing style, everything. It's just that in the grand scheme of things, the 5% actually does matter a lot, but yeah. So yeah, don't overthink. Don't look over like more than two or three blades. Just get a recommendation from a friend and stick with it because you don't wanna be wasting as much time as I did. I've already gone through that process and I don't want you to go through it. It's it's painful, it's boring. Just just don't do it. Just listen to what I said in the video. I was gonna say, if this advice helped you, give it a like, but it can't help you until you buy the blade and test it. So I guess that's a wrap. See ya.